Kesha, President Kesha. Actually, I represent here uh, two organizations. Uh, the first is Nepal Research and Education Network, and the, the second is uh, Telemedicine Society of Nepal. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, doing some kind of collaborations with GP Man uh, since uh, uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic as well. So uh, <coughs> uh, I will uh, quickly go through my slides. Uh, I try to finish it as early as possible. Uh, uh, so first of all, I'd like to um, uh, share you a brief introduction of uh, these two organizations. The first is Telemedicine Society of Nepal. Uh, it is uh, established as an umbrella organization uh, to promote telemedicine and digital health activities in the country. And uh, uh, these uh, institutions advocate in various aspects uh, uh, regarding uh, telemedicine and digital health. And uh, uh, recently, the Telemedicine Society uh, opened up its institutional membership uh, for the institutions and individuals as well. So um, I would like to extend the uh, invitations as well. And at the same time, uh, this is very important that uh, Telemedicine Society of Nepal is going to host um, the fourth telemedicine uh, and the digital health conference uh, in the coming date. Uh, so we are currently uh, working on that aspect. And uh, I will take this uh, opportunity to uh, invite you all as well uh, and uh, to uh, for your uh, uh, possible participations in the events. And regarding Nepal Research and Education Network, it is a uh, uh, research uh, entity. Actually, we work on uh, ecosystem, uh, research ecosystems. We provide uh, research and education network uh, connections uh, to our Nepal's research and education communities. And at the same time, we provide uh, various research and education related uh, services. You may heard about uh, EduRoom, and other services and uh, very soon we are also uh, working to um, provide access to scientific journals and resources over the research and education network as well. And uh, uh, Nepal Research and Education Network uh, has been engaged with these telemedicine services uh, for, from its establishments, which is more than uh, uh, 15 years. Uh, we do provide technical support uh, regarding these telemedicine uh, related areas. Uh, so I will uh, briefly share about uh, uh, the overview of telemedicine. Uh, uh, the time limitation is just for 10 minutes, so I will not go through the details. Uh, but uh, we can probably say that uh, we already spent uh, two decades of telemedicine practices in Nepal, which was, just, uh, which was initiated uh, the, in 1998. That was the, the, the first, uh, from my understanding, and based on the literature, actually, that is uh, found in some ways journal uh, as well. So uh, that was uh, more focused on satellite-based telemedicine uh, for climates uh, in Mount Everest regions. And, uh, and subsequently in 2000, uh, there were some uh, telemedicine activities between partner hospitals uh, and uh, Swim Film Charitable Trust, which was uh, later extended to Gorai uh, and Tansen hospitals as well. Uh, at that time, it took two days to get the response from uh, the concerned experts as well. So uh, we we can compare those things uh, at the real, at, at the current time. Uh, and uh, uh, later, uh, Hafnet Nepal, I think uh, we are well aware about that organization, uh, which was uh, based in Kiran uh, University Teaching Hospitals at the time. And uh, they contributed uh, uh, significantly for uh, the growth of telemedicine as well. And the later, uh, uh, Mahabir Kun, who established uh, uh, long range wireless uh, from uh, the old hospitals in Pokhara that connects uh, his village Nangi, Ramcha, and Tikut. Uh, so that uh, initiative uh, uh, led us to the new era of uh, video conference based telemedicine. Uh, which is uh, which is uh, a very important aspect uh, of the current time, and uh, yeah, Nepal Wireless Projects that is called the Nepal Wireless Projects. Uh, so they had collaborations with Kathmandu Moral Hospitals at the time, and connected the Gauri Center General Hospitals. So that is also the wireless connectivity from uh, Kathmandu to Tolakat. And uh, NAI Health is another organization uh, involved in these telemedicines, and uh, later we become a lecturer of health sciences and some other cases of rural welfare councils uh, that connect to real-time telemedicine in Sipkhana and Kalki districts as well. And the later Nepal government initiated uh, uh, telemedicine's link to 
25 uh, district hospitals uh, and the parallel hospital uh, is the uh, uh, focus uh, uh, for uh, these telemedicine services. And uh, at the same time, the uh, telephone based telemedicine services was also initiated uh, in both partner hospitals and uh, few university teaching hospitals. Uh, so I will look at uh, some active telemedicine uh, initiatives. Uh, please, this is the uh, uh, this is not the detailed list. So I found uh, uh, these telemedicine services are currently active, uh, and uh, they are in a different form as well. Uh, some telemedicine practices are, uh, are are like the full versions of telemedicine. So maybe it goes the basic versions, uh, maybe like the teleconsultations and ESR integrations and all of things uh, that that get the under the label of the telemedicine. So. Uh, so far, uh, uh, the quick assessment like the Bullikel Hospitals, uh, ICT for Development, uh, Ansel, they have some kind of uh, collaborations um, uh, to connect some outreach centers of Bullikel Hospitals. And they have the ESR integrations with the telemedicine services. So now we need to focus on the ESR and other peripheral integrations with the tele telemedicine services, not only focus on like the take services. And the similarly, uh, BPKIHS, uh, they are also uh, connecting uh, some uh, PSCs at uh, Tanakuta and Sankar Sabha district uh, since uh, 2015. And uh, later, Telemetry Society uh, uh, had uh, some uh, collaborations with Kakman Memorial Hospitals, and currently, Telemetry Society uh, is providing telemedicine mm -hmm. services to the uh, rural municipalities of Roswa district, so it is uh, uh, active telemedicine actually. Uh, doctors at uh, Kathmandu Memorial Hospitals are located there two, two hours of time per day uh, for these uh, telemedicine services as well. And similarly, there are some other initiatives uh, from uh, Nepal Police, Nepal Army, and Armed Police Force as well. Uh, mostly they serve their communities, uh, uh, but to some extent, the young people will also get uh, the access of these telemedicine services. Uh, yeah, obviously, there is Arts Foundation, they have uh, their own course. And uh, as recently, uh, uh, the Surkhet uh, Provincial Hospitals, uh, they uh, aim to connect 42 health institutions in the uh, sixth district of Karnali province. Uh, so, so, so far, uh, these are some of the uh, active telemedicines. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that there are not others, but uh, yeah, there are uh, some other initiatives as well. So, uh, these are the organizations currently involved in telemedicines. Uh, and it is a good thing that uh, we have commercial initiatives uh, that is now visible, uh, which was uh, very difficult uh, context of, uh, if we compare to two decades back. So uh, these platforms uh, are significantly supporting uh, telemedicine and digital health activities in the country. And uh, with regard to the regulatory aspects, uh, yeah, there is a lot of things to do, but uh, still we have some uh, uh, arrangements, uh, e-health strategy is there, uh, and telemedicine guidelines uh, is there, uh, that is uh, by the Nepal uh, Medical Council, and, and, uh, and the latest is the guideline for telemedicine and online health services. So these initiatives somehow try to um, uh, uh, support in this uh, telemedicine growth, but still there are a lot of uh, areas we need to focus for uh, the development of telemedicine in the country. Uh, so I will more focus on the challenges based on our experiences as well. Um, uh, yeah, there is the regulatory aspect, so which is uh, we, we need to address uh, for uh, the betterment uh, of the telemedicine and the uh, situations. Uh, so policy is, uh, is uh, not there, uh, uh, so that is uh, what we need to work on and we need to push our government for uh, the policy for this related things. And also institutional arrangements like we don't have any uh, dedicated departments, so maybe I think the elementary society has proposed uh, governments uh, to establish uh, digital health uh, departments which will oversee all the telemedicine and digital health related activities in the country. And, and another is a standard, uh, obviously uh, the, the government has to develop a standard framework for, for all the organizations so that uh, all the telemedicine activities will be inside that framework which uh, I think uh, lagging at the moment. And uh, another uh, aspect is the stakeholder engagement is uh, limited. I think that need to be addressed uh, for the uh, telemedicine uh, system. And uh, 
Uh, the another is awareness related elementary aspects, which is the major uh, context. I think uh, digital literacy is a uh, step challenge. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that we are not able to operate mobile and uh, other digital devices. It means uh, beyond that as well. Uh, so uh, awareness, uh, lack of awareness goes to the leaders as well at uh, municipality levels and, and all the different areas as well. And uh, yeah, capacity building activities uh, that is required for the sustainable generation chapter, uh, uh, which is also the challenge at this moment. And regarding the implementation aspects, uh, uh, the, the first uh, is uh, we need to overcome the resistance that uh, usually creates from the health human forces. Uh, that is uh, one of our uh, experiences as well when we try to implement the telemedicine services. Mm -hmm. Then the first uh, oral leg is uh, it is difficult uh, to uh, get the ownership uh, from uh, the human human health forces. Uh, uh, so it is uh, difficult and uh, it is sometimes uh, not implemented as well. And uh, health work uh, pushes this license. Uh, that is the another important area. I think government is also working on that aspect. So without this uh, work pushes digitalization and telemedicine activity is uh, always like a pilot project. And uh, yeah, there are some other areas uh, planning uh, and long-term viable plans. Uh, usually, we approach on telemedicine. Usually, the uh, our. Uh, Rural municipalities and municipalities, they come, they approach with us uh, 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 without any viable uh, long term plan as well. So, obviously, uh, that will not be sustainable. And uh, uh, lack of integration between digital uh, health system, uh, uh, so it's, it's a major challenge. Uh, but the good thing is that the uh, government is currently working with uh, uh, interoperability lab, so I think that will uh, somehow address the issues uh, around these implementation aspects. And uh, so far, equity and accessibility aspects is uh, not uh, um, seriously considered by the government, uh, but uh, this will be the major issues if we're not able to address uh, these concerns uh, timely. And ethical considerations is also there. I think, uh, yeah, that's uh, all. So, uh, again, I want to reiterate and I want to invite you for uh, the fourth telemedicine and uh, digital health conference. Uh, most probably, we are trying to go outside the Kathmandu, uh, so we are uh, here to decide on the dates. But uh, we are we initially plan for that event, and we want to extend uh, our hands to the GP man as well for for that event and uh, maybe the other organizations. So that, that would be uh, the events uh, organized by all these uh, uh, health communities. Uh, thank you.